In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. I'd like to welcome you all to our Perseverance Family Conversation. And this is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Every Sunday is a day of great rejoicing because we celebrate always the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For that reason, we say this is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. <clears throat> so we welcome you all on this wonderful fifth Sunday in Easter. And as always, we'd like to invite Mary to be with us. Mary is many wonderful Titles. Mary is the mother of God. Mary is the mother of the church. And Mary is the mother of each and every one of us. Also, when we pray the Hail Holy Queen, We invoke Mary as our life, our sweetness, and our hope. That's right, we honor Mary as our life, our sweetness, and our hope. So let's turn to Mary and beg Mary to pray with us and to pray for us as we rejoice in the resurrection of our son from the dead, as we pray the prayer that Mary loves most. And that prayer is the Hail Mary, also known as the angelic salutation. Together, Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Now, my friends, let's invite to be with us our spiritual director. What a privilege it is to have as our spiritual director, the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit has many wonderful titles, among which would be the Holy Spirit is the paraclete. <clears throat> He's also known as the gift of gifts. He's also known as the sweet guest of the soul. He's also known as our Consoler and our Consoler. Holy Spirit is also known as the Sanctifier. He who makes us holy. Sanctifier, he who makes us holy. So let's uh, ask the Holy Spirit to be with us to help us. As we pray the classical prayer to the Holy Spirit together. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle within us the fire of your divine love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created. And thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who did instruct the hearts of your faithful <coughs> by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant us that by the same Spirit We may be truly wise and ever rejoice 
in his consolation through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady of Fatima, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Michael the Archangel, pray for us. <clears throat> Saint Gabriel, pray for us. Saint Raphael, pray for us. Saint Peter Chanel, pray for us. Saint Louis de Montfort, pray for us. Saint John Abaretta Mola, pray for us. Saint Ignatius of Loyola, pray for us. Saint Francis Xavier, pray for us. Saint Maria Faustina Kowalska. Pray for us. All God's angels and saints, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. So, my friends, the family that prays together stays together, and a world at prayer is a world at peace. <clears throat> a world at prayer is a world at peace. So, my friends, as our friend Lulu has already posted for us today, we celebrate not only the fifth Sunday in Easter, which we always celebrate the resurrection of Christ every Sunday, but also on the church calendar, April 28th, we actually, the church celebrates actually three Three saints. The great theologian last century, Hans von Balthasar, says that when we look up to the sky, we look up to the heavens at night, we see the stars shining in the, in the heavens, in the firmament. Each one of those stars has a different glimmer He says that those stars are the saints in the firmament of heaven. One day, God willing, will be one of those stars shining in heaven. But we have our older brothers and sisters that go before us, shining brightly to enlighten our path on the pathway to holiness. <coughs> so today we've got these three brilliant firmaments, and they are Saint Peter Chanel, Saint Louis de Montfort, and Saint John de Beretta Mola. So my friends, So my friends, today, the very heart of Sunday, which is the day of the Lord, is the holy sacrifice of the Mass. So I'd like to place all of you on the altar in the holy sacrifice of the Mass and pray for your intentions. First, I'd like to pray that 
all of us would be open to the gifts of the Holy Spirit. That we would be open to the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Perhaps this can be our prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come through the heart of Mary. I'd like to pray for our families, for the conversion, the sanctification and salvation of our families and our family members. And finally, I'd like to pray for those who will be dying today. That they would die in God's friendship. And related to us, we don't know the day nor the hour that God will call us from this life to the next. But we want to pray for the grace of all graces, which would be to die in the state of grace, so that we can go to heaven. So, my friends, this is a day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Alleluia. 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 As always, my friends, there's so much to cover today. So I'd like to give you a, a brief overview of the readings that we have in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Jesus says that we do not live on bread alone, but every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. St. Paul says that the word of God is like a two-edged sword that separate, separates bone from marrow. St. Jerome says ignorance of sacred scripture is ignorance of Christ. Psalmist says that the word of God is a light for our path and a lamp for our steps. So let's allow ourselves to be guided enlightened and illuminated by the Word of God, which is a lamp for our steps and light for our paths. So, my friends, I'd like to give you a panoramic vision of of the readings we have today in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. And speak also about the, the, the saints that we celebrate today, how the saints are the ones that really put into practice. They're the ones that live out the Word of God better than anyone else and we should be striving in our daily lives to get to know the Word of God, to understand the Word of God, to love the Word of God, and to implement or to put into practice the Word of God in our own lives. So the church, the Fifth, Sunday of Easter presents the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles. And this whole Easter season, my friends, is a time of rejoicing, but it's also a time in which we're reading and meditating the Acts of the Apostles, also known as the Gospel of the Holy Spirit. So this is a kind of a summary of the first reading. <clears throat> it 
we find it in Acts chapter 9, and this is, this is shortly after the conversion of Saul of Tarsus. Saul of Tarsus is converted on the road to Damascus. And he comes to Jerusalem. And he wants to, to join the disciples in Jerusalem. But they're afraid of him. Who wouldn't be? This is a radical change. This is perhaps the most famous conversion story in the world. A radical, radical change. Because here you have a man who is violently persecuting the Christians, getting letters from the church officials to arrest the Christians, to drag them out of their houses, to throw them into prison and have them put to death. We see this also in the case of St. Stephen, that St. Stephen is condemned to death and he's stoned to death. And who approved of this was the young man, Saul of Tarsus. They placed their cloaks at the feet of a young man named Saul of Tarsus who concurred or approved of this murder of the first martyr, St. Stephen. So it's understandable that the disciples in Jerusalem would be fearful of this man that was responsible, at least indirectly, for the death of St. Stephen, as well as many other Christians. <clears throat> How was it How was it that Saul was accepted. Well, it came about in this way. The person that I'm going to mention right now, we've, we've already made reference to him. But more and more we see the importance of this man that I'm going to mention. And his name is St. Barnabas. St. Barnabas is a very key figure in the Acts of the Apostles in the early church. St. Barnabas was the cousin of St. Mark. He was a noble man. A man that had money and he sold his field and put his money at the feet of the Apostles. And the Acts of Apostles describe him as a good man, filled with the Holy Spirit, as well as a man of faith. So it was as a result, it was as a result of St. Barnabas that that community in Jerusalem would accept Saul of Tarsus. In other words, Barnabas said that Saul had an experience with God on the road to Damascus. And he was converted to Jesus Christ so that they should accept him. So he was accepted. Then he starts to preach to the Hellenists because Saul was a Roman citizen, but he also he spoke Greek. And the Hellenists got very angry. They wanted to kill him. So they took Saul. They put him in a basket so that he would be saved from the attacks of his enemies. So I'd like to make one comment on the reading today. 
And it's this. <clears throat> we can, by our words, we can destroy a, we can destroy a person by our words. It's called slander. It's called calumny. It's called character assassination. We can destroy someone by our words. But also we can save and build up people by our words. Therefore, let's make this proposal today that we would utilize the gift of communication, the gift of speech, to communicate the Word of God, to enlighten others, to encourage others like Barnabas, his name means son of consolation, to enlighten others, to help others. As Mary Jo places, the power of the tongue. The tongue can do a lot of good, but the tongue can do a lot of evil. Recognize that we also will be judged upon the way that we are, we, the way we live, but also the way in which we utilize our words. One definition of the purpose of speech is to communicate the truth with love. So that's my message I'd like to glean from the Acts of the Apostles, the importance of Barnabas giving credit to Saul and the authenticity of his conversion. The responsorial psalm is, I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. Last week, in the catechism, we we're going through ways in which we can live out the first commandment, and that would be, I am the Lord your God. You shall have no God, other gods before you. And the catechism points out one way in which we can put into practice the first commandment is to is to adore God. A way in which we can adore God is to praise God. And then to pray. And then to offer up sacrifices. So, let us live out the response of Osama. I will praise you, Lord. I will adore you. And of course, my friends, the best way in which we can worship, praise, adore God is by participating fully, actively, and consciously in the holy sacrifice of the Mass. So let's try to live out Mass all the more fully. The second reading is taken from the the first letter of St. John. Now I'd like to just glean one idea from the first letter of St. John who says, he says, children, let us love not in word or speech, but in deed and truth. So building upon the first reading, if we love God, true, we have to prove we love God by the way we speak. But we have to put our words into action. Jesus will say in the Sermon on the Mount, in Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7, Matthew chapter 7, <clears throat> not all those, 
Not all those who say, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of God. But those who do the will of my heavenly Father. Then St. John, once again, will make reference to the commandments. What is the acid test? What would be the acid test to show that we are truly loving God? And the response is, we show that we truly love God, not simply by feelings, sentiments, emotions, levitating in the air, having visions. No. Those are secondary. We truly show that we love God by obeying His commandments. Jesus says, if you love me, if you love me, then obey my commandments. If you love me, then obey my commandments. So let's become beggars, beg for the grace to put into practice, beg for the grace to put into practice the Word of God, to put into practice the Word of God. And that takes us to the Gospel today. And I'd like to give you a brief summary of the gospel for today, which is taken from John chapter 15, verse 1 to 8. And Jesus gives us a very clear, graphic, organic issue, uh, image. And it's the image of the vine the vine grower, the branches on the vine, the grapes on the vine, the branches that are growing and growing and bringing forth fruit, whereas the other branches that have withered and died, and the pruning or the cutting off of the dead branches and throwing the dead withered branches <coughs> in the fire. And then Jesus ends by saying that his father is glorified by bearing much fruit and by us becoming his disciples. So, this is the the image, this, this organic image from nature that Jesus gives to us. So let's see if we can take this apart and give you an interpretation of John chapter 15, vine in the branches an interpretation and then an application how can we how can we apply this to our own lives <clears throat> okay let's start the vine the vine itself is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
with life-giving sap that runs through the vine. The vine dresser is the father. You might even call that living sap would be the Holy Spirit. And we, we are called to be, we are called to be, my friends, the branches. The purpose of the vine is to produce the branches. But the branches have a purpose. The purpose of the branches on the vine is to produce healthy, wholesome, and abundant fruit. That's right. To produce healthy, wholesome, and abundant fruit. That's the purpose. That's the purpose of the branches. To produce healthy, wholesome, and abundant fruit. Jesus would say in John chapter 10, verse 10, I've come that you have life and life in abundance. Now he says in John 15, My, my Father is glorified by you, bringing forth much fruit. So all of us who are exposed to this natural reality of <clears throat> a vine and its branches, we know, using common sense, that if those branches are not bringing forth fruit, they're drying up and withering, then they could actually prevent the other branches from blossoming and flourishing to their fullest extent possible. So it's all, only natural that those withering and dead, and dead branches should be clipped away. They should be pruned away. And Jesus says then to be thrown into the fire. So we can ask ourselves today what what are some of the withering dead branches in our lives that have to be that have to be cut away what are some of these dead branches that have to be just cut away now think if we ask the holy spirit who is the sweet guest of our souls the Holy Spirit to pour a light on our minds, on our consciences, he will enlighten certain dead branches, certain dead branches that have to be cut off, pruned away, and cast into the fire. This demands honesty, humility, transparency, and courage. So I'd like now to move <clears throat> from this organic image of the vine, the vine grower, the withered branches, and the fruitful branches, and try to apply this beautiful image of Jesus Christ and the conversion of Saul 
and the call to obey the commandments. See if we can maybe apply this. To the saints. Apply this to the saints. And most specifically, most specifically, my friends, to the saints, and the saints that we celebrate today. And thanks uh, for the words of Lulu at the beginning of our conversation that we actually have three different saints today. And they are, perhaps Sophie can just write them, post them for us, St. Peter Chanel, St. Louis de Montfort, and St. John of Beretta Mola, St. Peter Chanel, St. Louis de Montfort, and St. John of Beretta Mola. Most of you probably know that I am in Southern California and I have been here for quite a few years and it's the, I live in the parish of St. Peter Chanel. So let's try to apply St. Peter Chanel to the readings today. that as Saul was converted, St. Peter Chanel was called to work on conversion. This is a perennial preaching that if we love God, then we have to get people to know the commandments, but also to obey the commandments. And we're gonna see how St. Peter Chanel produced not only fruit, but fruit in abundance. How he glorified God by bringing forth fruit and by becoming truly a disciple of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So let's look up to heaven. We see in the firmament of heaven, Peter Chanel, Louis de Montfort, and John de Barrette de Mola three shining stars in the firmament of heaven. We're called to be one of those one day too. Let's pray for their prayers. St. Peter Chanel, my friends, he was born in France on the 4th of July. The very beginning of the 1800s, he, he was born in 1803. and died today, April 28th, 1841. So he only lived to be 38 years of age. And I think that's a point for us that any time, any place, any circumstance, we can become saints. <clears throat> Any time, any place, any circumstance, we can become saints. There's no monopoly on holiness. Any time, place, circumstance, we can become saints. So even right now, irrespective of our past. We can even start right now, even right now, we can start right now to 
open our hearts to the working of the Holy Spirit and try to become saints. Pope St. John the 23rd, who was canonized with John Paul II, he taught that the saints are the living masterpieces of the Holy Spirit. Don't you like that? Saints are the masterpieces of the Holy Spirit. We're called to be masterpieces of the Holy Spirit by trying to become saints. So uh, just a brief overview of this great saint. He was gifted with a very keen intellect. He became a priest in France. And he became a religious priest like myself in the, you'd say, St. Peter Chanel SM, the Society of Mary or the Marist Priest dedicated to devotion to Mary. And he was very obedient. I am the vine and you are the branches. My Father is glorified if you bring forth fruit and you become my disciples. So one of the hallmarks of this great saint is his, his, his great desire to be a missionary. That was the, the desire of his heart to become a great missionary. a great missionary saint. But he obeyed. <clears throat> Given that he had many talents, the bishop asked him to become a teacher of future pre-seminarians. So he taught theology for a few years. And then he was placed in a rundown, basically dead parish, and in a few years he revitalized the parish. So what we see is just a, a heartfelt desire to do God's will by obeying. But I repeat, that he his heart had a great longing to be a missionary, to send to the foreign lands to preach Christ to those who had never known Christ. Like the apostles, we see the real fire of the apostles that we see Barnabas and Paul wanting to preach the word of God and, and suffering because of it. So finally, he was given permission to become a missionary priest. And where was he sent? He was sent to the islands. The islands of the South Pacific, just that you're aware of this, we're talking about, my friends, uh, about 200 years ago. In the first part of the 1800s, the 19th century, there was, there had been no Catholic missionaries to 
any of these islands where the natives lived. <clears throat> None whatsoever. So Peter Chanel arrives at an island called Futuna. Futuna in the South Pacific. Oh, I misspelled it. Futuna. There we go. Futuna in the South Pacific. Now this was a place where the word of God had never been had never been preached. And there were circ there were there were also islands close to Futuna where the inhabitants lived. Now when he arrived, he was well received basically because of a misinterpretation. <clears throat> they thought that he was just coming to learn their language and to help them out basically economically. But things darkened when the chief or the uh, chief or the uh, the king recognized that the purpose of Father Pierre Peter Chanel was not simply to learn the language and provide material resources for these people. Rather, he was there because he wanted to preach the word of God. He was a Catholic priest missionary. He wanted to evangelize. He was there to convert these natives to the love of Christ. He had come for the salvation of their souls. So a couple of things had happened. that radically changed the atmosphere. There was a lot of uh, witchcraft, black magic, sorcery, involvement in the satanic. And Peter <coughs> worked hard to expel the evil spirits of the island. He worked hard day and night. The language was almost impossible to learn. He's very kind with the people. He's very patient. There were some conversions that came about. And in the Liturgy of the Hours on the feast day of St. Peter Chanel, the second reading in the Mass, he said, in difficult circumstances like this, Peter Chanel said, we have to become saints. We have to become saints in difficult circumstances as such. This was, this was the end of his life. So the, the king, or the chieftain of the island <coughs> had a son who was converted. And he was actually baptized by St. Peter Chanel.
Becoming aware of this, the father of this, the father, the, the, the king, father of the son that was baptized, became angry and was fearful that the island might be converted because his, sec his son, who would be second in line to take his place once he died, if he were converted, then he would convert the rest of the island. So the king decided that the best thing would be to eliminate, to kill the person of Father Peter Chanel. So he sent a group of thugs around the house of Peter Chanel and he was actually clubbed to death. He became a martyr. But to make a long story short, not long after that, other missionaries came and the whole island was converted as well as the the circling islands of Futuna they also were converted to Jesus Christ for that reason, Tertullian, one of the fathers of the church, has stated that the blood of martyrs is the seed of Christian growth. So my friends, this is a brief summary of the life death and patrimony of the great St. Peter Chanel. So may God bless all of you. And let's pray for each other. I invite you to share our message to the whole world. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.